All right, recording, rolling. It is Thursday, December 7th. All right, so I have uh, something special for you guys today. You guys see this template right here? All right, this template right here? We're going to make uh, one of these, a uh, circular slide rule uh, calculator. All right. Oh, yeah, thank you. All right, so what's got going on? Uh, you guys remember chapter eight puzzles are due tomorrow. A lot of you guys have already turned these in. Grab those in class. Uh, yesterday, I gave you guys your next quiz, rotational dynamics quiz. All right, that one's due on Monday, right? So you guys have to uh, have the weekend, All right? All right, so uh, I have uh, actually covered, um, I think everything I want to cover regarding rotational dynamics. Uh, looked at all your quiz questions, and we've done multiple examples of all those uh, past couple of weeks. So I think uh, today is a good opportunity for one of these uh, brand new day activities. And then uh, tomorrow I want to start the midterm review. All right, so here's kind of the premise of this. Uh, let's uh, let's go back in time a few decades. Suppose it's so 1960s, 1970s, and you are an engineer working for NASA, and we got to get astronauts to the moon. Right? So we're working on the Apollo mission. Right? All right, so you have one of these nice handheld digital calculators back in 1970? No, right? Uh, if they had anything with this computational strength, it probably would have been about the size of this entire room. Uh, and any calculations they would have done, it, I mean, I imagine there would have been like some kind of, uh, uh, they, they would have had like um, reserve like time for it, right? Like, you know, like take turns, right? So yeah, like probably all these engineers making all these calculations, uh, maybe like at their desk, is what tool are they actually using to make calculations? Uh, brain and also, also uh, uh, yeah. What what kind of calculator? Not not one of these nice digital calculators with the battery in it, but a a slide rule. You guys ever heard of a slide rule? Right? Uh, maybe not. Um, it, it's kind of hard to find. I, I I tried to find some even on the internet, but uh, I don't have anybody manufacturing them anymore. I mean, maybe somebody in the world, big world, right? Uh, it looks kind of like a ruler. You know, the numbers are not spaced out. Uh, uh, arithmetically evenly like, like they are on the scroller. They space logarithmically, which same thing as a circle, so same type spacing, right? And it's like a couple of rulers that are uh, popped into each other, so they slide past each other. So you get like two sets of numbers, right? Now, if you turn that into a circle, you basically get this, which I'm gonna have you guys construct, and I'll show you guys exactly how to use it, right? Uh, actually, I like the circular version more. I think it has some advantages to it, right? Oh, uh, right, so here, you, you guys see this here? Oh, there's, let's look at the numbers. Here's one, here's two, way the heck over here, and then three, and then, ooh, and then the numbers are getting closer and closer, right? Four, five, six, and then, okay, seven and eight, nine are bunched together, and then goes nine, uh, 9.5, 9.9, .9, and then rolls back to one. Hmm. That, that's kind of interesting, right? right. Why, why are the numbers all uh, spaced the way they are? There, there's a specific reason they're not uh, spaced evenly arithmetically. They're spaced uh, logarithmically, okay? Right. And then I've got two circles, and there's this paper clip that's uh, connected them together. And ooh, look, they can rotate relative to each other. Right. A lot like uh, like a slide roll. Yeah, it's like like two rollers slide past each other. No, do so. I'm going to um, here. Let's we'll start cutting out both of these circles. I should actually Google slide roll so you guys can see a visual of what this actually looks like. But let's take a good minute here and cut out both these circles. All right, you guys, ready? All right. So you guys are cutting out your two circles. I'm cutting out the two circles. Right, so we're all cutting out the two circles. We're going to make an old, uh, so, so I'm really similar to, let's say, an Apollo mission style calculator, except ours is going to be circular instead of linear. Right. Right. So here, I'm going to pause this video while I'm uh, cutting these out. Right. All right, uh, recording resumed. Uh, I just Googled a uh, slide roll. Here, here's what it looks like. You guys see, like, uh, lo looks like rulers clipped in place. They can, like, slide past each other. Right, and then, uh, ooh, uh, found what, or so just open this up kind of randomly, uh, NPR, hey, slide roll, computing device that put a man on the moon. Hey, kind of the theme example I just showed you guys. If I scroll down, it's found, oh, look at that, right? You, you guys see those rollers like sliding past each other, right? And you can use that to, oh, in this case, they're uh, dividing, right? So you can multiply, divide. I'll show you guys today how to multiply, divide, take square roots, uh, take cube roots for that matter, we'll do too. All right, so let me go back to, I'm gonna pause this video and keep cutting this thing. Pause. All right, recording resume, we're back here. All right, I got my two circles cut out. It's like you guys are uh, about there almost. Right. Now, uh, we're all, uh, 
of course, I'm eventually going to attach these with the paper clips so they can spin relative to each other. Right? But even before I do that, I'm just going to focus on one circle. So just to emphasize that point, I haven't even put them together yet. I've just got one circle. Right? And you can pick either one because they're scaled the same. Uh, you might notice you can align the numbers, right? Uh, like if you align the one and the one, then all the other numbers are also aligned. Two and two, three and three, four and four. So they're, they're scaled the same, right? It's one is a, what, a little bit bigger than the version of the other. Right? So pick either one. I picked the yellow one, right? And let me show you guys how you can take uh, roots, like square roots, with nothing except the circle, right? Which has something to do with how the numbers are spaced. Remember I said the numbers are spaced logarithmically? Okay. Hey, uh, let me ask you guys a question. What is half of 10? Five? Five? Is five half of 10? Right? That's actually one correct answer, but there's another correct answer, right? Uh, five is the arithmetic half of 10. But guess what the logarithmic half of 10 is? Not 10 times one half which is of course five, that's what you guys just told me. But 10 to the power of half, what is that? Is that like the square root of 10? Can I say that? Is that about, oh, 3.16 or so? Okay. In fact, you know what? Let me tell you guys a side story. I forgot to tell my earlier students the story too, but got a little time here. Um, if you um, ask either little kids that have just learned to speak, but haven't really learned to count or math yet, or if you go out to like some tribe in the middle of the Amazon jungle that again, like hasn't really ever learned like math, right? And you ask them that question, like what's, what's, what's half of 10, right? Both of those groups of people will say probably something about three, about three or four, right? Now you ask like anybody who's like been through school and learned math and say, oh, well, obviously half of 10 is five, right? Because um, our brains are actually wired to think more logarithmically than uh, linearly, right? So th this whole like counting, like one, two, three, four, five, is actually something you have to train your brain to do uh, from a young age, right? It's actually not naturally how you think, right? Kind of similar thing with, um, uh, here, I'll give you guys just one example. Uh, how about, um, you see this all over the place in economics with something called elasticities. It's similar type thing, like percentage changes, right? Like what if you buy an, uh, an item for $1? And you see next to it, it's like the exact same item for $2, right? It's like, whoa, why is that one? Why is this expensive, right? Versus what if you buy an item for $100 and you look to the next shelf and say, hey, there's an identical item for $101. That doesn't seem like a whole lot of change because now it's only a 1% difference, even though numerically it's a dollar difference either way, right? So, right. so like half a 10 in a logarithmic sense is um, a little bit more than three. So like if you start with one and multiply it by 3.16, you get to 3.16. If you multiply it by 3.16 again, you get all the way back up to 10, right? So 3.16 is halfway, is like half of 10 in a logarithmic sense, right? right. All right, so what, what does that have to do with uh, the circle? Well, I told you these numbers are spaced logarithmically. I also told you that this one, um, or wait, I may miss this, right? Uh, you guys see that there's only single digit numbers, it goes one through nine, and then nine, 9.1, 9.5, 9 9.9, 9 9 and then it wraps around to one again, right? That one might represent one, or it could represent 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. You're allowed to let the decimal place float, or it could go the other way. It could be 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, right? So when you're, whenever you're using this method, like a slide rule, or in this case, a circular version, uh, you're allowed to let the decimal place float, and you have to kind of keep some kind of sense in your mind about where reasonably the decimal place would go, but like what is the correct order magnitude, right? That's kind of up to you. So what is half a 10 on this uh, the circle calculator? Right? Well, what you do here is uh, put your finger on the one, right? You say, well, what's halfway around the circle? And that is, oh, look at there, exactly on the other side. And if I want to show you guys here, uh, I'll have my ruler here lined up on the one, shoot exactly through the center, 3.16. Look at there, Z, 3.16, same thing. Ah, okay. What if I want any other square root? What is, um, well, let's, let's do an easy one. Because what's the square root of nine? Three, obviously, right? And pick a sub that you would obviously know the answer to, right? right? So what is that aligned to on this, right? Well, the way I'm going to do for this is I'm going to treat one as like home base. So the number one is like home base, right? Like anything times one or one squared, it's always one, right? And then uh, I find nine right here. Or it's not too far away, right? I say, well, what's halfway between those? What's halfway between one and nine? I'm going to go halfway the long way, right? Uh, and that is... Uh, oh, hey, that's three. You guys see this three is exactly dead halfway between one and nine, right? Let's do another one that's uh, 
probably not too hard. What's the square root of O16? Is that four? Right. Now on, on the circle calculator, where, where is 16? Ooh, can I look at this 1.6 right here? There's 1.6, right? Uh, because remember the decimal place is a lot of the float. So where it says 1.6, that could represent 16, right? So here's home base is one. Here's 1 1.6, I'll call it 16. What's halfway in between? Oh, ping, it's exactly four. Look at there, look at there. You see it, you see it, right? Uh, but you know what? Um, I'm kind of leaving off half the story <clears throat> because there's another way to get halfway between the numbers. And that's like halfway around the other way around the circle, right? Oh, so what could that kind of mean? Oh, let me set up a big old pattern for you guys. Right, let's do, what's the square root? I'm gonna set up a bunch of square roots. Square root of one, square root of 10, square root of 100. Right, you guys see a pattern, it's about to emerge right here. Right, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million. Right, let's take a bunch of square roots. Uh, I bet a lot of these you guys know, and uh, maybe some of these you're about to learn right now. Okay, right, let's go one by one. Guys, what's the square root of one? One. What's the square root of 10? 3.16, and a string of decimals, we'll just call that. Right? What's the square root of 100? 10. What is the, uh, go, 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 don't get tripped up on this one. What is the square root of 1,000? Ah, 31.6. Ah, I can't trick you guys. 30, oh. 30 squared is 900, a little bit more than that. Okay. What's the square root of 10,000? 100, what's the square root of 100,000? Ah, 316. What's the square root of a million? Yeah, 1,000, right? All right, do you guys see a pattern? Like a, like a, like two tracks? There's like an even and an odd track, right? Okay, so like oscillates between those two. Um, now I've been showing you guys the example of like a, a square root of 10 is 3.16. Oh, where's my simple circle? Right, so halfway around, so 3.16, right? But halfway around the other way is, well, um, remember that one can represent 10, 100,000, so, right? Halfway between that number in itself would just be also the same location, which lands you on, ah, like the even track, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All yeah. right, how about, um, how about one of these other examples I did? Like, uh, how about, Square root of 16 is four, right? Instead of doing square root of 16, what if I did square root of, let's try a bunch of these. Uh, 1.6, 16, 160, uh, 1600, right? Let's see what that would be. Um, some of these, obviously you're gonna, like square root of 16 is four, square root of 1600, I think would be 40, right? Well, what about those other two? Uh, I'll use my digital calculator to figure out. For 1.6, right? So digital calculator tells me 1.26 in a string of digits. This one is, uh, of course, 10 times that, 12 point six something, or something like that, right? right? So how can I get that from this analog circular calculator, right? So here's home base is one. Here's, uh, you know, 1.6 or 16 or some version of that, right? Now, if you go halfway around this way, obviously you get four, which is like this track, 4, 40, and 400, 4,000, right? But what about halfway around the other way? One, 1.6. It looks like um, here, here, what's halfway? Looks like about, uh, it's between 1.25 and 1.3 about, so over there, between 1.25 and 1.3, I see. Oh, oh, of course it had to be, because here, this is the actual answer, right? 1.26, right? Uh, or, you know, times 10, times, okay. Right, you guys see that? Okay. So now you can take square roots with nothing except one of these circles that's, has the number space logarithmically, right? and also your brain, right? Yeah, kind of have to keep track of what the reasonable answer would be, right? Hey, let's do a cube root. You guys think we do cube roots? And it's a little bit trickier, but I'll show you guys that in principle, this can be done. Let's do a real simple one. Guys, what's the cube root of eight? Two? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, guys, the same thing as eight to the power of what? One third? It's like the same thing? Right, right. So what does that mean for uh, this? Like if we were to figure out this from scratch, right? So here's home base is one. Uh, here's uh, here's eight, right? And now one third power, which is what a cube root is, right? One third power, right? Isn't it like a third of the way around the circle, do you guys think? A third of the way? So if I'm uh, using my thumbs to divvy this into thirds, 
right? Here's one third of the way, here's two thirds of the way. Oh, look at that, a third of the way. What number exactly is my thumb pointing at right there? Two, which is the answer to the question. A, A, now you can do cube roots with this, right? Again, uh, it could get a little bit more involved, kind of like the square roots did, but there's a basic example, okay? All right, you guys good, good so far? All right, guys, we, we've just been taking square roots and cube roots with nothing except one of these circles where the numbers are spaced logarithmically, right? You guys ready to bring in the next circle? Oh, I see a tiny hole in the middle. Let's punch some holes. Uh, maybe you have a pen. Pop a couple of holes right there. Uh, and uh, you guys have paper clips on your desk, right? You guys see, uh, see some paper clips? All right. Um, I, or I don't know, maybe, maybe I've run out by now. Uh, guys, show of hands, who does not have a paper clip? Uh, all right, oh, let me pause this to get you guys some paper clips. All right, recording resume. All right, so we got paper clips. Uh, all you need is one of these guys. Um, right now, guys, all we're gonna do is just push it through. You don't have to like twist the paper clip or anything. All you do is just push it through here and then push it through this one here. I mean, you have to bend it a little just to get the angle on it, right? But you don't have to twist the heck out of it or anything, right? Look at that, just pops in right there, right? And that is here, so not, not nothing crazy, right? It's, it's still a paperclip shape. I could still take it out and it would still look like a paperclip shape, right? right? All I'm doing is just using this as a central axle. Ah, look at that. Look, it can rotate, it can rotate now. Right, you guys got a rotating, right? Hey, this looks like a, like the linear version would be like a slide rule because the, this is basically a slide rule, right? It's just a circular shape, which uh, like I said earlier, I think uh, actually has some advantages too. Right, so right, so now you guys have like a circular slide rule is what you have, right? right so what can we do with this? Hmm, right? Well, one thing I see, I think I mentioned this before too, is that the numbers could align. Like if you align the one to the one, then everything else snaps in place. The two and the two, three and three, four and four, right, and so on, right? Hey, what if I interpret that like a fraction? I like like one over one, like numerator, denominator, right? Um, do you guys see all the fractions? Would it be the same? Two over two, three over three, four over four. Those are all equivalent to one, right? Right, you see that, right? What if I rotate this? Let me find, uh, what if I do, uh, how about, how about this? Uh, What if I align this inside one to this outside three? Right? And I interpret that as a fraction. Do you guys see three over one, three over one, right? All right. Now, if I leave these two circles locked in place relative to each other, let's, let's look around the circle, see, see what we see here. Uh, let me get that line right. It's about there. Uh, what else I got? Three over one is three. What's, oh, six over two. Hey, hey that's also reduces to three. How about nine over three? Hey, that's three also. Ooh, do you guys think it's like the same ratio all the way around? Let, let, let's do another one. 1 1.2 over four. Oh wait, 1.2 over four, does that work? Hang on a minute. You're allowed to float the decimal place, right? Could that? Could you interpret that as 12 over four? You could, which would also be equal to three, 15 over five, 18 over six, 21 over seven, yeah. It looks like it's the same ratio all the way around. In fact, you could twist this however you want. And uh, in principle, you have the same ratios all the way around. Now, you can use that to your advantage to very quickly multiply and divide. Let me show you guys how. I'll show you guys with a simple example here. Right. Let's do uh, 3 over 1 is a fraction. 3 over 1 is a fraction. Right. Um, and that's equivalent to any other pair of numbers all the way around. Uh, again, try to take something that's really obvious. Right, as an example, six over two, that could equal two, right? Six over two, right? You guys see that that's equivalent to that, obviously, right? Right. Uh, do you guys remember from some math class something called cross multiplication? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've done plenty of stuff similar to that too in this class, right? Uh, it means if you have two fractions that are equal to each other, uh, usually you're like solving for X, but in this case, it's you know, obvious that those are equal, right? Uh, if you multiply this denominator and this numerator, that's equivalent to this denominator times this numerator. So what I can say that is uh, this two times three, this three times two is equal to this one times six. Right, you guys see that? Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so how could that be used to multiply anything? If you can see the principle that's going on here, you can quickly multiply any numbers you want. Okay. So here, here's what we're gonna do. That um, one, one times anything is just that number. Like one times six is just six, right? Okay. If you wanna know any two things multiplied together, any two factors multiplied together, uh, in this case, uh, I wanna know, well, I wonder what is three times two. Here's the method. I'm gonna use the inside one, like this yellow one, to point to one of the numbers that's being multiplied, in this case, three. Right, so it's like pointing to the one that multiplied three times two, and then the other number multiplied. I can just shop around on this inside circle, on this yellow circle, right? And I, I'm saying I'm multiplying those two numbers, and whatever I'm multiplying by, in this case two, points to the answer to that product. Ooh, points to the straight to the answer. So in this case, okay, uh, what I'm saying is, all right, I want to know what, what is three times two. So I, I I rotate this so that the one aligns with the three. And then I shop around for two, and then the point is the two points to the answer, which is six. Boom, done. You can multiply that fast. Or right? what if you did the other way? Uh, one times two should be, or sorry, um, three, three times two the other way. Right? What if I align this one with the two, and then I shop around for the three? Oh, that's also equal to six. It's the same thing, right? So there's two different ways to get that. Right? Two times three, three times two. Hey, could you do this in reverse? And you could also divide, right? Like, what if the question was, I wonder what is six divided by two? I mean, obviously, you know the answer. I'm just trying to use the basic example, right? What is six divided by two? Well, take your uh, calculator, uh, rotate it so that the six aligns with this two. So now there's my fraction, six over two. And since that's equal to all of the ratios around the circle, all I have to do is find the yellow one on the inside and that points to the answer, which in this case is three. Let's see if it worked. The one oh, points to the answer, which is three. Look at there's these, right? Guys, yeah, right, right. Look, um, now that we have a basic example, let's do something wacky. Uh, somebody give me a, a number between one and 10. What's the number between one and 10? Huh? Seven. Seven, All right. Uh, what's another number between one and 10? Six. Uh, I heard six, seven and six. Right? All right, so seven times six is 42, right? right. Um, so here's what I do. I'm gonna find uh, or the inside one. I'm gonna align that to the number seven. So let's rotate this around. So one points to seven, okay? Right. And then go around and find where is six. Six is way over here. Right. And what does this point to? Ooh, I'm seeing uh, four, and then two more tick marks, that's like 4.2, 4.2, right? But in my mind, I have to think about order of magnitude. So I'm thinking, what would be reasonable? Um, well, I know it has to be more than both those numbers, right? You guys know it's going to be 42 is what it's going to be, right? Right, something like that, right? Or if you wanted to divide, I wonder what is 42 divided by 6? So I line 42 and 6, right? And then I go around, find one points to the answer, which is, bing, 7, right there. Right, you guys, you guys see that? So there you go. Right now, you guys have an analog calculator. It can uh, multiply, divide, take roots, all right here. Right now, on your end, uh, there, there's a couple of catches. One is that you have to float the decimal place, so you have to keep track in your mind what's a reasonable order of magnitude. Right? Is it 4.2? Is it 42? And the other um, the other limitation is that you only get about two or three digits of precision. Like if you want like four digits of precision, it's like, well, you know, it kind of runs out at some point and now you have to pick up a digital calculator. But it can go to about two or three digits of precision. Okay, all right, there you go. All right, uh, any questions on that one? All right, so um, we have a solid oh, 15, 20 minutes of class left. All right, let's do something a little bit different today. Uh, I assigned you guys a take home quiz, rotational dynamics. Uh, if you want to work on that, anything you do in class uh, today is uh, less uh, work over the weekend, uh, or it might, it might be a good uh, opportunity to check focus all your classes, make sure you got everything turned in. We're about to go into midterm review in the midterms. Um, anything you have to work on, uh, or you know what? I put a stack of books on each of your guys' desks. So if you want to do that opportunity to learn something new, uh, there you go. All right, so make the best use of your time. If you have any questions about anything, let me know.